When people think about the American dream, they usually think about entrepreneurial endeavors that allow them to be free from corporate control. With that being said, the idea of starting and growing a successful business has been altered in the past 15-20 years. Everyone nowadays wants to be the next Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Uber, or Airbnb. This can put a lot of pressure on people. By setting expectations too high, people are ultimately setting themselves up for failure because there are many factors and variables out of their control. Today, we're going to be talking about unicorns. The pandemic has changed the way we work, learn, meet, travel, shop, worship, and even invest. So perhaps the days of the shiny mythical venture capital unicorn are over. Welcome the sturdy and solid zebra. More than 90% of US businesses are defined as small or medium. There are more than 40 million solopreneurs in this gig economy. Independent workers, freelancers, short-term contractors performing a variety of tasks, including business development, sales and marketing, invoicing, tech support, etc. Since the employment mass exodus, the gig economy has tripled in two years, amounting to 36% of all US employees. 36% of everyone in the United States that is earning an income is part of the gig economy. Small businesses facing doom after long periods of lockdown in the 2020s began to move their brick and mortar operations online. There has been an e-commerce explosion since COVID began in both consumer and the B2B sectors as many enterprises have found new ways to adapt. Yet despite many brick and mortar companies moving operations onto the internet, still more than 70% of fragile small businesses shut down during the pandemic have never reopened. One third of small businesses that shut down in March 2020 are still not operational. With the war in Ukraine and US inflation at its highest since the 1980s, how can freelancers and contractors in the gig economy and small and medium businesses survive? By working smarter, filling a need, and offering solid value in the VC world by being a zebra, not a unicorn. So what is a unicorn? Well, a unicorn is very straightforward. A unicorn is a privately held company that has a valuation over $1 billion. What is a zebra? Well, a zebra is still a company that's valued at $1 billion and is privately held. But the key difference is that a zebra is a real animal in the real world, whereas unicorns are mythical creatures. What this means is that zebras tend to be more focused on adding value to their consumer base versus adding value to venture capital firms and investors. Unicorn companies tend to focus on the next round of funding. It's what is referred to as a runway. So what does your runway look like? From pre-seed to C to round A to round B to round C, all of the unicorn companies are basically focused on where you are now. How do I get financing in the next round? How do I grow my revenue to the point where I can get financing at a higher valuation? And so on and so on. So once you get to that seed level, let's say you have $2 million investment. What you're really doing is calculating that $2 million that's going to give you, let's say, a year of runway. So you have one year that you don't have to worry about any costs. You're focusing on growing your team and and growing your MRR. The ultimate mission there is to take that $2 million and convert it into monthly recurring revenue, so growth, and then go into round A financing. Then you get the round A 20 million, and that gives you another two years of runway. So you grow your business, you grow your marketing budget, you grow your team, and all you're doing is reinvesting back into the MRR, into your growth, and then ultimately goes into round B and round C, and so on and so forth, until you hit that $1 billion value and become a unicorn. The problem with these types of strategies is that these companies tend to be more focused on investor relations rather than adding consumer value. The key difference between those two is that you're focused on the VC and the investor block and you're not really focused on your user or your consumer block. You are under an immense amount of pressure to deliver fast growth now. That leads to short-term decision-making, which in turn harms the company's future. When a unicorn hits a growth wall, they drop their price to maintain their growth dynamics, even if that lower price is simply not sustainable. To oversimplify, they take the investor's money and subsidize their cost to lower the price, but once that subsidy runs out, 
they're screwed. Uber is a great example of that. Uber had huge growth, hit unicorn status very fast, but ultimately hit a wall where there's a problem with generating enough revenue to cover costs because they dropped their price and they basically killed the taxi market. With the new leadership, they kind of shifted gears and they're moving more into this zebra area where they're focusing more on adding value to the drivers and of course adding value to us as users. Zebra companies tend to be focused on their user base up front. So the discussions that you have within a management team in a Zebra company revolves around how can we get more paid users? What do the users actually want? How can we add more value in certain areas? Zebra companies tend to have multiple sources of revenue. It's not just one revenue stream. You might have three, four, five different revenue streams and you're kind of bootstrapping along the way. So as the money comes, you spend more. Then when the VC comes in, all the VC is really doing at that point is adding fuel to the fire and basically accelerating the process. If the VC doesn't come in, the zebras will continue to survive. Whereas unicorn based companies, if they don't get the next round of financing, they tend to implode. For example, WeWork or Quibi. Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. The purpose of the unicorn is exponential growth. The purpose of a zebra is sustainable prosperity. The outcome for a unicorn is usually monopoly. The outcome for a zebra is more community. Unicorns tend to be more focused on quantity. Zebras are more focused on quality. The method for a unicorn is competition. The method for a zebra is collaboration. The measurement metric for unicorns is user acquisition, whereas for zebras, it's user success. Unicorns get most of the media attention. Unicorns are everywhere. Wherever you look, it's unicorn here, unicorn there. But let's be completely honest here. Nine out of 10 startups fail. This is the simple truth. So out of every 10 startups in the world, nine are going to fail. The reasons for these failures a lot of the time is they're not really based on solid demand. They're not based on adding value to real life, but simply adding more money. There's a great saying in the business universe, don't throw good money after bad money. If you put $5 million into a startup and you see that the growth is stagnating and they come back and they say, listen, if you want us to continue, we need another 5 million or we basically have to shut down. Throwing another 5 million to save the first 5 million is not always the best option. Option. And this is especially true when it comes to these 9 out of 10 startups that are ultimately going to fail. Companies that are more based on zebra mechanics tend to be a little bit more sustainable. Even if they hit a wall, they have generated enough revenue to sustain themselves before the VC came in. So they have the know-how to be able to continue to fight through the bad times to get to the good times. As I said in the intro of this video, becoming a unicorn has variables that are not under your control. Most unicorn founders are alumni of prestigious universities like Stanford, Harvard, MIT, or Berkeley. If you are in that club, then you have a network that can mitigate the risks and help you achieve unicorn status. Those variables become more manageable. Whereas if you're not in that club, you are far less likely to succeed. How do you counteract this imbalance? By becoming a zebra. Founders of zebra companies tend to be people who pursue their passions. Most zebra companies are run by CEOs who are experts in their fields. They usually have a bigger purpose than just themselves or making money. These founders are able to monetize their passions because they understand the market that they're serving. Anybody can turn a hobby or a passion in fitness, health, motor vehicles, music, education, etc. into a successful Zebra company. You don't necessarily need an MBA from a prestigious university to excel. With the pandemic war and inflation, there are a lot of unknowns going forward. And while talking to VCs and investors, we feel that sense of uncertainty. Shareholders and VCs have started looking for real value versus perceived value. High growth rate, although important, has become only one of two factors of being a successful startup, the other being sustainability. They want to know that your company is standing on solid, solid ground. They're looking for demand generation. So there's an actual real demand for your product or service, and you're able to monetize that demand and build off of that. VCs want to make sure that when the going gets tough, you have the skills and the know-how to dig yourself out of that hole without them bailing you out. VCs have started recognizing that the Zebra model can work and is worth investing into. What do you guys think? Unicorn or Zebra? Once again, if you like what you see, please help us out and subscribe. 
See you next week.